All right, folks, we are continuing our multi-faction cards for the Revelations full set review. And as a reminder, we're giving the cards spice ratings. So how excited I am to test the cards, build new decks around the cards. And that is entirely subjective and is not necessarily related to how powerful the cards are. So curious to hear what other people's opinions are. And we're moving on to our multi-faction cards that touch Veror and our multi-faction cards that touch Flamed On, but we have already covered Warpath and Genesis, so you won't be seeing cards with those faction types. So let's just jump right into it. Okay, so first card we're going to look at is Jade Brute. Already talked about this card. I'm going to give this card a three spice, basically just because I think it deserves a chance. Uh, my initial reaction to the card is that... Uh, Paying six resources for an 8-8 feels like quite a significant ask. But that being said, I, I want to give the card a fair chance because it does have the possibility to grow over the course of the game. So maybe maybe I'm uh, overestimating how how significant that, that stat to cost discrepancy is, but we'll see we're gonna give it a shot okay next ascended sorceress and this is veror and overseers and i am going to give this card a four spice it is very special in terms of what it can do that it can kill characters or artifacts that are using activatable abilities we don't have anything like that right now and uh if I'm being honest, I'm excited about this card because there's a couple of cards that are really, really pesky, frustrating cards that can kind of live in the command zone and dominate a game. Uh, I'm going to name drop Evilly here that that card uh, may, may even deserve its own video at some point. But right now, let's just say I'm very excited that there is another way to deal with cards like that and this card also doubles as being you know a reasonable character even when it fails to serve its intended purpose okay next hellmouth laborer exiles plus bearer and this is just a big demon for a demon tribal deck while it's deployed your demons have their cost reduced by one and i'm under the impression that that happens during the planning phase. So if you have uh, seven resources available and you have two one cost demons in your hand, I believe you can play Hellmouth Laborer first and then play those two one cost demons in that same turn. So that's kind of significant. And when it attacks the top demon in your deck gets plus three plus three and consume three. I'm going to give, get, I'm going to give this card three spice, um, mostly because I'm just not really excited to play a demon tribal deck right now but when i get to building a demon tribal deck it's definitely a card that i'd like to give a shot because i think it does a lot of good things and uh is just one big chunky boy all right also exiles plus veror memories in blood and its target ability card that costs five or less gains recall x where X is its cost, and then this card also has Recall 5. I think I'm going to give this card a 3 spice. I think that this card could be really exciting, or maybe it's not exciting, and it's just kind of hard to tell without having tested it. That I think that there's obviously value in playing your abilities from the graveyard, but I think it's worth noting that this has its own upfront cost and that you do that the turn before you play the ability from your graveyard so you have to anticipate that that ability is an ability that you would actually like to cast the following turn that you might like let's let's say i i choose something like death ray in the graveyard uh if the following turn the character that i was planning on death raying is not on the battlefield anymore for one reason or another then I've kind of whiffed with this card and the Death Ray. So I think it requires quite a bit of planning and uh, maybe some deck building thought 
in terms of where you're putting this card. Next, Nero's Experiments. This is Sleepers and Veror. Raise target character in the enemy graveyard that costs three or less. It becomes undead and gains if this character is in the graveyard for three consecutive turns. Raise it. And this card has Recall 6. Um, I think this card's going to be really fun for somebody, but not for me. Uh, I think I'm going to give this a 2 spice. I think the effect is very cool, but I do not like playing cards that are unreliable. That this card, if you're playing against a enemy who just simply isn't running that high density of characters, then this card might be kind of just dead in your hand. There's some matchups where it's going to be really incredible, but I prefer cards that are a little more consistent, uh, and that because this is relying on your opponent's deck and how they've they've built their deck, it's not for me. But I can appreciate that this might be a card that is very spicy for somebody else. So I, I want to say that I think the card's design is cool, it's just not my personal favorite card. Okay, now we're transitioning from Cult of Veror to Flame Dawn, so we've got some cards that are fall into both. And this is Pross's Demonstration. This card is a 5 spice card for me. It's a big, flashy ability with a just huge effect. So it does 10 damage to the enemy fortress, and that fortress becomes immolated, taking 5 damage at the end of the turn. So this card, once you've played it for the rest of the game, they're taking five damage every turn. I think this card does admittedly have a, you have to really plan your deck around this card because getting to 11 resources or reducing the cost of this card is going to be a big part of having this card in your deck. And similarly, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, this card, I think some people have looked at it and immediately thought this belongs in the Cult of Veror plus Flamed on aggressive burn decks. But I am under the impression that that's really not the role of this card, that those decks are all really, already really great at pumping out damage. I think that this may belong in more of a control deck where the objective is not to have many aggressive characters and burn spells, but rather to have Pross's demonstration be really the, the core win con and the rest of your deck exists to help you survive until you get out process demonstration and then continue to stall the game as your opponent slowly dies to the card. Uh, I don't know exactly what that deck's going to look like, but I'm going to give it a shot. I'd like to try to make this card work. And next we have Pross Flame of Vengeance. He's one of our set legendaries, and I think this is a five spice card. I think that uh, unlike process demonstration, Pross himself can fit into not just this like slow burn deck, but also the aggressive decks as well. That if this guy manages to connect with the enemy fortress, it gives you an extra layer of inevitability as an aggressive deck. Uh, I think he's a very fun card. Definitely one that I will be trying because he, I mean, he's just, he's just cool. And uh, he seems like he's probably pretty good, but only trying them out will reveal that. Okay, moving on into our Flamed On cards. So we have Lead by Example. And this is fitting the Flamed On plus Overseer's unique character archetype, which is proving to be kind of an archetype that's gotten a bit of support in this set. Um, however, I, I think this card I'm going to give two spice as well. And the reason is that because of its high cost and the fact that the effect is a one-off boost to attack and health that has a lot of restrictions on it, like you have to have, basically you have to have a board populated with characters. That board also has to be populated with a, a, a non-zero number of unique characters. Uh, and you have to be willing to give up 
a turn or at least a, a portion of your resources to dedicate to this card that could have otherwise been dedicated to deploying another character. Like, this isn't a card that you'd ordinarily play on turn five. It's a card that you might play later in the game if you've developed a, a significant board. And because there's so many um, kind of requirements that you have to meet for the card to perform well, it's not one I'm super excited about. Even though I actually am excited about the unique character deck as a new deck, this card, I'm not even sure if it's going to be up to snuff in that deck. I will give it a shot, but it's not a card that I have a lot of faith in right now. All right. And this is another unique character-esque card that is uh, in this same kind of Flamed On Overseer's deck, and that's Believer of paragons and this card feels like it's got a lot more going for it so just to cover the card real quick if a unique character you control would take damage while believer of paragons is in the support zone that damage is redirected to believer of paragons and it also has pay three all unique characters in your hand get plus three plus zero which i assume is permanent uh this card's very weird it's got two really completely different things going on but both of them do center around that unique character strategy. Uh, I think it's also fair to mention that this card is uh, functionally kind of similar to Martyr Golem, and Martyr Golem historically has been a very effective card in decks that run a lot of characters. So I think this card is exciting. I'm going to give it four spice. And uh, the last thing I'll say about it is this card, <laughs> it does a whole lot, and it feels like it does it all in a really weird way. That... Um, uh, first of all, it's a it's a card that tries to protect your characters, but doesn't have it has more attack than health, despite the fact that the card asks you to leave it in the support zone. So that's that's a little weird. And then also, I think it's fair to mention that this card will very frequently die the turn you play it, which is fine because that's kind of the purpose of the first half of the card. But the second half of the card, the all unique characters in your hand get plus three plus zero, very frequently may just not come into effect because uh, the character has to a survive and then b be around the following turn when it's worth your while to pay three to give that buff to your characters in your hand so really weird card but nevertheless an interesting card okay immolated ghoul next card and this is sleepers or flamed on so you could play it in either or both and uh this card is a five spice for me that uh even though the character is not particularly flashy it fills a very very strong niche uh not really for flamed on but for sleepers that this is a one cost card that can be very defensive uh early in the game which for sleepers can sometimes be a part of the game that they struggle in and also this card has five health as a one drop which is very significant in infinity wars because there's a whole lot of things that do four damage that are kind of early game effects that ordinarily kill essentially all one drops and this guy gets to live through those effects so even though this card is one of the potatoes cards that i've discussed where it's not really that flashy and it just kind of uh fits in the deck and supports the deck without being the central focus of the deck it's a card I'm excited about because it, it fills a role that hasn't been filled yet for sleepers. Okay. And uh, now we'll talk about our Flamed On plus Descendants of the Dragon cards. So first we have Spirit Fire Disciple. And this card is interesting. So when you play it, it's got Vigilance, so it deploys directly to the defense zone. It's a 210. And at the start of combat, if it is attacking alone... It fully heals and gains plus eight, plus zero until end of turn. So uh, I think I'm going to give this a two spice, despite the fact there are a lot of things I do like about the card. So let's talk about the things that I do like about the card. The first is I appreciate that uh, the card encourages you to switch back and forth between defending and attacking with flamed on descends the dragons which i think is a a cool dynamic for this faction combination to have um 
and I also think that the art's really cool, and uh, I also really like seeing that the game is asking you with this card to do something you ordinarily might not do. That being said, I think it's asking for a lot of the player who wants to include it, that uh, I think that the fact that it has to attack alone to, for you to take advantage of that extra effect is kind of rough, given the fact that you already have to deploy it to the defense zone, have it live, and then go on the assault that... Uh, you're, you're, it's it's a lot to ask, especially when I would assume that most Flamed On Descendants of the Dragon stacks may want to attack with more than one character. And if they are going to attack with just one character, I'm not sure this guy is the one that you want to attack with alone. That he attacks for a total of 10 damage, which at uh, certain stages of the games might be might be good, and that full heal might be good. But um, yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure about this one. We'll give it a shot eventually. But uh, right now, I'm kind of iffy on it. And uh, I would like to see other cards that try to do something similar to this, but uh, maybe being done or executed slightly different than how this card is done. OK, last card, Defend the Borders. And this card is a five spice card for me that I think that this is the reason that you build Flamed On plus Descendants of the Dragons. That it basically doubles all of the characters you have in play that are in the defense zone and spits them out into the assault zone. And that's really explosive for a number of reasons. One is that it lets you attack with a bunch of characters uh, that you're okay with having die. Uh, another is that if you're pitted against a deck that is also aggressive, that this allows you to maintain your pressure on their fortress while simultaneously defending yours. And the last, of course, that this character or this uh, this card lets you double up on characters that have deploy effects. And I think it's fair to say that Sackless is maybe the the biggest one that comes to mind. That this card plus Sackless could pump out a lot of damage. Okay, and that wraps up this collection of multi-faction cards, and I am going to try to make the next video the final video that wraps up everything else. I'll see you all then.